Okay, what I'm going to share with you today is something special. First of all, it feels like summer outside here in Virginia. It's 70 degrees outside, the sun is shining. So what better day than to tour a luxury property, a new construction property? Where we are right now is in McLean, Virginia. The home that I have behind me, which I'm going to show to you once I flip this around, um, is again, a new construction build. It was built just about a year ago. This home has seven bedrooms, six full bathrooms, two half baths. It's nearly 12,000 square feet of living space. Everything in this home is high-end, is new, is... When they were building this property, you can immediately notice that effort was put into this build. Everything from the structure, the architecture, to the materials, um, to the meticulous design within the home. So when I first came to look at this house to preview it for um, a client who may potentially be interested in it, I did a private tour first, took a look at everything, thought that it was impressive, wanted to share it um, with the rest of you. So let me go ahead, turn this around. This home currently sits at just north of $5.1 million. Uh, somebody had, a couple of people has, have asked me this before. When I do these luxury tours, these property tours, do I rehearse them before I do them? The answer is no. I, I just go through and try to share with you as much as I can and as much as I know, and hopefully that's sufficient. Most of the time, I forget to mention 25 to 30% of the information that I do know because these homes are very large and I have to remember just by looking around and seeing things, and sometimes I miss stuff, but if you do have a specific question, maybe I didn't note on it, if I have the answer, I will, uh, I will provide it to you. So let's go ahead and turn this around. So you're going to be joining me for a little bit of a walk here because this home has a private driveway. You are next to good company. This home right here behind these trees, I'm not gonna film it, but there is a, uh, a beautiful home right there. More, um, I'd say more Renaissance type Mediterranean, not Mediterranean, but Renaissance style home back there. So let's go ahead and move forward. The first thing you're gonna notice is that this has its own like English street lamps, which I thought was very cool uh, to be added in kind of at nighttime when you were coming up in here. It gave you this, this London feel to it, and I, I thought it was special. So we're coming out of the winter. Things need to bloom, but there has been a lot of landscaping done to this property, and more landscaping could obviously be done if you chose to do so. Immediately as we look at the exterior, what kind of house is this? Well, I'm going to tell you. Originally, this home uh, started with the idea of being a contemporary European design architectural style to it. This lot is only so big. It is a large lot. This is a 0.65 acre lot, okay? So almost almost three quarters of an acre lot. But this home is massive. So there had to be adjustments in the architectural plan in order to have the home fit. So what you, uh, what you end up getting now is a almost a Georgian style front to the home. Uh, you still have that European type flair to it, but you also have almost an infused carriage home style. As you can see, they ended up putting the twin uh, double car garages down here on the bottom. And this is obviously, not obviously, but you'll see when we get inside, there's plenty of living space all above the garage. Okay. So let's go ahead and enter here. Of course, you have the circular driveway, the roundabout. And as we first come up to the exterior, there's a couple of things to mention. This, this exterior here is premium brick. This brick is about three times the cost of normal brick. It's not painted. This is actually how the brick looks. Uh, the reason that they went for that in the build is because, well, if you take brick, normal brick, you structure the home and then you paint it, it becomes a pain for the new owner. They, if there's ever chipping or anything like that, well, then they have to go repaint the whole side. So rather than doing that, just go ahead and take the cost up front, get the premium brick. You never have to paint it. You're going to notice the black windows. Um, this is part of the, which I've mentioned before in other properties, the Anderson, um, the Anderson package. Okay. So this architectural package by Anderson includes the black frame windows, top, top of the line windows. I'll show you some of the features that they have. They're really, really nice. I walked a little bit too close to the house, but up 
top, if you can see it, the roof line is a uh, synthetic slate, okay? You can go up there with ballpoint hammer and smash on that thing. Nothing's going to happen. Very strong roof, 50-year um, uh, life on, on, those, on those types of roofs. So let's go ahead, move forward. Now I have the door open, but it's a nice, impressive door. Heavy door, lots of European flair to it. Okay, close this door behind me. Let me mention that you do have a full security system on this home and cameras built throughout. So let's go ahead and start. First of all, it's going to be hard for me to ignore uh, what's happening right in front of us. So let me just go ahead and do a pass through here. This here is where, this is a perfect place. What they've done here is they've, they've uh, created a rotunda right in the middle of the home, right in the middle of the home, okay? What a rotunda could be used for with this type of setup is a statement piece. If you have something you're really proud of, if you have a sculpture that's really uh, an expensive sculpt sculpture or something that a piece of artwork that you're proud to own, this is where you would place it, okay? This is everyone walks in and immediately what do they see as they walk in? They see the statement piece. And then as it goes beyond that, I'm going to show you it's an indoor, outdoor, open concept um, uh, piece of the house. So... If you didn't have a statement piece or anything of that nature, well then of course you could put a small table, you could put a nice vase on top of it, flowers, something of that nature, but in terms of having a statement piece, right there, perfect spot. What is this above us? Well, this here, this wood, you're gonna see that's different from the flooring and anywhere else in the house. This wood here is poplar wood. Poplar wood is some of the strongest wood that you can incorporate in a house. If you've ever seen a 200 or 300 year old barn and most of the barn is falling down, but the front porch uh, is, is still standing completely upright, that's poplar wood. It, it does not, it just doesn't go down. It's very durable um, in its structure. Let's continue straight back before we continue to anything else. Look at this indoor, outdoor concept. This is completely open, completely open. So these are pocket doors. They do come together, okay, but they completely slide in. The doors themselves are probably about nine and a half feet tall, probably somewhere around that. The um, ceiling height that you're looking at right now is 11. Upstairs, it's going to be 12. Downstairs, it's going to be 12. But you can pass straight through here. And on a beautiful day like this, I love this. I mean, this is a, a touch from the West Coast. So here in Virginia, to have this is awesome. Again, the poplar wood, it runs all the way across this, this uh, veranda. That's what you're going to call this area out here. This isn't really a, a balcony or anything of that nature. It's, it's a veranda. It's, it's massive. Okay, It's really a large entertainment space. It looks like we have flagstone down here. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what it is, but uh, it seems to be. All of this out here is wired for an entertainment system and a, a flat screen that you can put up there. So it's all ready, ready to go. When you do look off the wrought iron railing here, you have a perfectly, perfectly flat backyard, okay? The whole, you can see that it does go down. Your, your property line is down there, but they have uh, graded the land so that you could have a perfectly flat lot right here. Now, what, I mean, multiple things you can do here. You could throw an infinity pool here. You could do some type of entertainment space out here, badminton, whatever you might want to do, a big giant patio. And also, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and throw up privacy trees all around here. If you wanted to pull in trees from Italy or something of that nature and do cypress trees, that would look really nice. So completely up to you, but you have the perfect slate, the perfect blank slate to work with right here. Fireplaces, you've probably seen these modern fireplaces before. As you turn them on, they will change different colors. But let's get in here. Look at that. I didn't even show you any of this because we were going straight to the back. But what a grand uh, main floor of a house. 
Black accents they used perfectly in this house. I like how they've used them in the pillars and the beams. You have coffered ceilings, probably some of the most lengthy coffered ceilings I've seen recently. I mean, it stretches all the way across the family room. I'm not sure quite how long that stretch is, probably somewhere around 40 or 50 feet. Really impressive. Dual recessed lighting in every single square. You're gonna notice this as we go throughout. There is no single recessed light in this house. All of them are grouped. So you have a ton of light in this house. You already have um, massive windows, right? Floor to ceiling windows throughout the whole home that let in a bunch of natural light, okay? But you also have the installed lights, which really brighten everything up. So coming into the kitchen here, first thing that people are probably gonna notice, what is that countertop? The countertop, you very rarely see this. You very rarely see this. And I don't know if it's gonna translate through the phone of, of what we're looking at here, but this granite, it is an impressive, impressive granite. It's like a caramel type look to it, infused with almost a, a, a blue um, infusion. And I'll tell you why this granite is so impressive. This granite here is called Blue Roma. Blue Roma is a stone that can only be harvested out of one single mountain in Brazil. Whenever they do a harvest out of that mountain, the suppliers, the builders, the developers, they have to wait in line for it. They have to put a bid on it in order to get some of it because they only have a limited supply. So to have this in a home, to have this much in a home and across the counter space is amazing. To have it as the backsplash over there across the, the cooking area, incredible. Um, definitely a highlight of this home. A lot of people are gonna come in, they're gonna look at it, they won't know what it is, impressive. Uh, what else can I mention here? Oh, let's continue on the kitchen before I touch on something else. So you do have two deep sinks, both sides, plenty of cooking area. For you chefs out there, you've got space to, to move around, to shift. You don't have to worry about anybody in your way if you are someone who likes to cook. Over here, the Mila appliances, okay? Can't get much better than that. Uh, you have a eight top burner on here, the warmers right here, the active uh, burner six right there. Here's a little pot filler, okay? Cabinetry is that, um, I was going to say ivory white, but I would say it's actually a little bit lighter than an ivory, okay? Uh, I do like the super clean look to it. It balances out the blue Roma and black accents really nicely. You have two types of ovens here. You have the uh, conventional standard oven that, that you would use, um, but then you have a steam oven. So this is great. These steam ovens, you could, cook, you, you could cook a turkey in here perfectly. What they're doing is that they're infusing steam to cook the food so that it, there is never a dry piece. So if you were cooking a large turkey, a large ham, a large piece of meat, or, or anything else, it's going to be uh, super moist on the inside. It's going to be a tender cut once you're finished. It's just an excellent appliance to have, and I don't see this in many homes at all. You have a little pantry here. I say little, it's not little. You have a pantry here. Massive refrigerator, also by Mila. Uh, you can do two things with this. With these types of fridge, the refrigerators, you can, of course, open them standard as you normally would, but they do have a little, you know, a little, a little fight to them, a little pull. So what you can also do with these refrigerators is just, if I can do it, maybe I can't. I'm probably not doing it right. I'm telling you, you press on that door, <laughs> you press on this door in a certain area, it triggers and the door opens automatically so that you don't have to sit here and, and fight with it. I'm just not doing it correctly. Microwave and of course your coffee maker. This makes a ton of different coffees. Uh, if I had coffee on me, we could make some right here. You'd have to sit through it as I make it, but uh, lattes, espressos, cappuccinos, uh, macchiatos, all of that, it, it will make it right here. No need for Starbucks. Let's go ahead and head into, I'll show you real quickly what the, okay, so 
study room, study office, nice, right in the front. And then I'll show you what the interior of the garage looks like. One of them, this is one of two. There's another one on the other wing. Now the lights um, at night, when you turn on the lights, they illuminate out of these, these frosted garage doors. So uh, during, uh, if, it, if I had a twilight photo or if it was nighttime and you were looking at the house, you would see this white light just shining through these frosted glass doors. It looks really cool. The, you know, with these being separated like this, the other garage um, is right over there, the entrance into it. With them being separated like that, I thought it'd be a nice place. One wing of the garage, you could have daily drivers. And then this wing, you could have your weekend fun cars. It looks like the landscaping team just got here, so I don't know if they're gonna interrupt me, but nonetheless. Half bath here on the main level. So they've, they've um, designed this to look like a upscale luxury bathroom in a, in a hotel, okay? And as they should, as they should. You're probably noticing that I am attempting to move through this property relatively quickly. It's a 12,000 square foot house. So, I mean, we just have to, you have to bear with me. There's a lot to see. At least it's fun to see. So you have one laundry room down here. You have a spare refrigerator. This is going to be more of your travel refrigerator. Um, extra stuff that you may not need in the main kitchen. You could just put over here, maybe Gatorades or something like that as you're coming in. Uh, if, you know, kids or you're coming in from, from playing ball or activities, gym, whatever. That's what that's for. So you have a small mud room here. You also have uh, another laundry room upstairs. So this is really strictly just coming in and out of the house uh, utility type room. Let me mention these hardwoods real quick. These hardwood hardwoods are... They're gorgeous. They're beautiful hardwoods. These are hickory hardwoods. So many people have heard the term hickory. Um, I don't think a lot of people know what hickory is, okay? So many people understand hardwood. It's, I mean, how could you not? Hardwood, it's from a tree. It's, <laughs> it's on the ground. Hickory, hickory is the source of where the hardwood is coming from. Hickory means that the, the tree that is sourcing this wood is a tree that produces nuts. This specific hardwood is a pecan tree. This is hickory pecan hardwood. So if you like this type of look, if you like this pattern, if you like this shade and this tone, this is what a pecan tree looks like on the inside. Let's head over to the first suite. This first suite, it's one of the masters. This home has two master suites. Two master suites in it out of the seven bedrooms. Floor to ceiling windows, light pours in. This is looking off the back end of the home to, towards the flat lot that I had mentioned. You have your own fireplace and TV uh, built-in ready, okay? I forgot to mention out here, I think it was out here, this. This TV panel that's ready to go above the fireplace, how big is that? Sits right around 80 inches. Massive TV can go right there. First master bath. Okay. So we head in, you have one water closet here. Okay, you have one here. You also have one there, so two water closets. You have two separate vanities, okay, and right there. Your soaking soaking tub. Everything here is going to be, um, so the flooring is a high-end porcelain tile, but everything that goes around the soaking tub and on top of the uh, bathroom countertops is a high-end granite. Everything that you find in this house other than the kitchen is a high-end granite in itself. It's just that the kitchen countertops, that blue Roma is a, a different level. Background of this backsplash of the, the tub is a, like a black onyx type tile. Here is inside the master shower. So, Standard shower head. You also have body sprays 
Um, this shower is also uh, has a steam, and, and oh, I should say this, rainfall shower head, okay? But this is also a steam shower. So lots of things going on in here, depending on whatever you want, it's got it in here. Something to mention that's kind of cool. So you see this closes, and a lot of time with steam showers, people don't immediately get the steam temperature correctly. It gets too hot, it gets too cold. So this panel up here, this glass panel, it flips open. So you can let steam out. If you've made it too hot, you can get some steam out. Once it cools down, you find the right temperature, go ahead and close it back up, okay? Not bad, not bad at all. I think you can store plenty in this closet. Nice decorative chandeliers to add to the atmosphere of the closet. There's plenty of room here that you could add an island if you wanted to. If you wanted an island to put your watches in, to put your ties in, to put your dress shoes in, um, you know, purse uh, type of, um, what am I looking for? Like a showcase type island. Perfect area, plenty of space. We're already at 20 minutes. I'm trying to fly through this. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, let's go upstairs first. I love these raindrop light fixtures. I really do like them. I think this raindrop light, light fixture is probably 13 or 14 feet in length. Okay, here we are at the upstairs. Why don't we go ahead, head this way first. First thing, the upstairs laundry I was speaking of, okay? Easy, get laundry from here to the upstairs bedrooms. Elevator, I didn't mention that downstairs. I probably picked it up on the video. The elevator goes and travels all three levels. That is a, um, a real elevator. Lots of times in these luxury homes, although they have elevators, there are these singular, very tight, kind of old school elevators that you would find 100 years ago with the chain, you know, the chain door that slides across. This one's a legitimate, real Cambridge elevator. Um, it, we're not gonna go in it, but just trust me on that. Ceilings in here, 12 feet tall. Massive, massive, impressive, grand. You have your first balcony here. Yeah, landscaping teams obviously here. All right. First balcony, looks off the end. Okay, let's, um, let's bank a left. These are workstations, these are built in, okay? This is not decorative, this is built in. Um, if you wanted to have like a, a, you know, a workstation of any kind, these being some of the secondary rooms, maybe it's a home workstation or something of that nature. If you wanted to turn it into a decorative piece, you could. Not a single bedroom in here is small. And look at the light just coming in, like just pours in. It's perfect. Let me mention something about these. See all these? This, this, all of these, rock solid. Sometimes builders will skip around costs by getting hollow doors, um, especially production builders that, that build you know, a ton of houses at one time. These are, are solid, solid doors. And what you'll actually notice is that if you look at the back of them, one, two, three, four, four hinges to hold up these doors. Many times you're only finding two hinges. Each of these doors is 250 pounds. I mean, they're, they're no joke of a door. Secondary bathroom. Okay. Let's head this way. So these rooms, they do have their own their own doors, okay? They're not connecting, they're not technically Jack and Jill. They, they um, are just across the hall from each other. 
So here's going to be the center bedroom. A nice vaulted ceiling design. All of these are already capped, okay? So you can put in your um, fans, lighting fixtures, anything that you want, but the electrical cap is there and ready to go. For a secondary bedroom, the closet's enormous. Here's one of the pass-through bathrooms between this bedroom and that bedroom. So this one might be shared as a Jack and Jill if you decided to have it that way. Let me go ahead and use this time to mention these windows if I can get this open correctly. Let's see, let's see here. All of these windows, in every window in this house, okay? Let me get this. 90 degree windows. I mean, if it's a beautiful day outside and you want to, you can open every single window of this house at 90 degrees, like there is no window there. Open those down store, downstairs um, veranda doors and, I mean, complete indoor-outdoor concept. Everything wired, ready to go for the TVs. Um, you have another veranda upstairs. Same size as the one downstairs. Poplar wood again. Looks right off the back. Okay. Hopefully you can still hear me through the weed whackers that are happening outside. Nothing I can really do about that. They have to do that. Okay. Um, let's see. I just, so we walked up the stairs here. I just took you through that wing. We're coming out here. I'm going to show you one more thing over here before we go over there. Elevator. This room is the biggest of the secondary rooms, if you can even call any of them secondary rooms. This room is huge, and it could be a, ma uh, a master or a, a owner's suite if you wanted it to be. I mean, whoever gets this room is lucky now. Of course, they have their own full deep walk-in closet and their own bathroom. Look at that mirror. Perfect. Okay. The top floor master. Just as grand as the first level. Same amount of windows, almost identical layout. Huge fireplace. This fireplace is probably going seven and a half to eight feet across. Not small by any means. And then we have the same layout in the master bathroom again. The only difference is that you have a color scheme change. Now you can see that we're doing the darker black um, granite on all the accents, the whole shower interior now being a black theme, dark theme as opposed to downstairs, we had that gray, uh, light gray and white theme. Okay. Same thing again. Same closet, plenty of space. Almost the same closet, almost. Two water closets. Now let me mention something while we're up here real quick. 
I'm trying to mention as much as I can remember while we run through this place. This whole house is uh, a three zone house operated by its HVAC system. It is, the system is a smart system. And what that means is that the three uh, units that are working in this house to heat or cool it, they actually speak to each other and they speak to each other by saying which section of the house needs warmth, which section needs AC, how do we need to balance the energy, and it's constantly doing that. They're constantly communicating. So if the sun is rising and falling, okay, let's say it's rising over here, all that sunlight's coming in here, this is heated, okay? So we may, in the summer, we need more AC this way, but over here it's gonna be cooler, we don't really need anything over there. So the systems will speak to each other and, and say where needs sun. As the sun goes across and it's going up top, when it's directly above us, this top floor is going to get way more warm, warm than the basement, which may not really need that power. So um, it's, it's energy efficient in the way that it's, it's communicating. Obviously with a very large house, people think about the energy bill. They think about, you know, wasting energy. And uh, that is to mitigate that. By the way, I didn't even mention this. This tree branch light, I really like this. I really like that. Okay, let's stand up here and just do a quick scan. So this is going to be the basement. Okay, we'll hang a left real quick. Elevator, luxury bath. Small space over here where you could put a, um, like a foosball table, uh, some type of little game room uh, type deal you could put in there. And then as you move this way, this is going to be an entertainer's bar, okay? There is no, it's, it's, there's no oven or anything like that down here. This is strictly for entertainment purposes. The purpose of this whole downstairs as we move through it, you can tell it's to have company over. It's to entertain guests. So we're not really cooking up here. We're more, we might be storing food um, or wine bottles, uh, things of that nature, but not, you know, not, uh, not prepping meals up here. So we have that high-end black granite going across the recurring black onyx tiles that you saw in the bathroom. You do have a, a wine rack right here, okay? You can be storing your bottles right there. Um, what else did I want to mention about this? Oh, there's two, one there, one here, just like a gas cap. You're going to press on it. Then you have your power. You have USB, uh, and uh, power outlets all going around here. So two of them built into this island. Here's that door again, that indoor, outdoor concept, sliding pocket door. This one goes straight out into the backyard. How awesome, how absolutely awesome. Since we're out here, there's our English lights again, lighting the back end of the property. Complete privacy because you sit above everybody. You're looking down on everyone. Here's the back end of the house. So the great thing about, you know, when we walked into the family room immediately in through the front entrance, we have that rotunda design that I spoke about putting a statement piece or something in there. It's great that they put that there because it was to have this recurring theme of this curvature that was naturally already in the architecture of the house. So you do see that curvature repeat and, and show up in multiple spots of the home. And that's what makes the, um, that rotunda in the, in the uh, main entrance coincide even better. Poplar wood again. Let's... Hang a left. Rec area. Another fireplace, tons of light. And the last bedroom is right back here.
12 feet of tile going straight up. In person, impressive. Walk-in closet right back here. Now, if it's not already obvious, let me mention something. You cannot tell that you're in a basement in this house. You have no idea. 12 foot high ceilings, complete indoor outdoor concept, walk out level straight into your yard. If you had a pool built out there, if you had some grills out there and you have people over to entertain, this is an excellent, excellent level. This was a great use of this space for how they graded that lot. I'm glad that they graded the lot like that because otherwise this basement would have been, I mean, it could have been wasted and it's such a great basement. I don't even think I turned the lights on in here and I need to. This is gonna be very dark if there's no lights. Okay, so I think you can probably already tell what we're walking into here. Theater room, okay? So the great part about this theater room, just as you uh, enter in, you can see that you have stairs there, you have stairs here, you have this partition wall. What it does is it forces your guests to take a travel path so that they're not interrupting anyone that's already sitting in here and that everyone appropriately sits in the rows. This is stacked, of course, as it should be, so you're not looking at the back of anyone's head, okay? All the uh, um, electronics and everything would be going back in that room. So there we go. Imagine the parties down here. Insane. I think I can probably flip this around now. There are actually two other things that I forgot to mention when running through the house. I mean, there's probably plenty more, but two that came to mind. One is that most of the light switches in this house, um, they, have, they have dimmer switches on them. So in the evening, uh, maybe early in the morning, whatever, if you wanted to switch the amount of light that's coming out of the recessed lighting or the lighting fixtures or anything of that nature, maybe you wanna change the mood of the evening, you absolutely can. A lot of them, I'd probably, 60%, 70% of the light switches in here have dimmer switches attached to them. The other thing was about the drywall. That's not something that commonly anyone pays attention to. The drywall in this house, your standard drywall that anyone hangs is a half inch. It's a half inch thick. Um, it's just commonly used. It's the most, most popular thickness used. This home was created with fifth, five eighths drywall. What that means is that it's a thicker drywall. It's actually a much harder install, and that's why a lot of builders tend to dodge it. They have to go through a different nailing process when they put up this drywall. Why does that matter to you? Two things. Number one, a lot more insulation in the walls. Also, didn't even mention this, there is a, um, is it called siphony? I don't remember. It's an insulation, really high-end insulation that they're able to put in, in the walls in combination with the 5 8 drywall. And what ends up happening is that you get a very high R value. I think it's R21 uh, on the insulation rating. If you don't know what I'm talking about, well, then don't worry about it, I guess, or Google it. If you do know what I'm talking about, you'll know that an R21 wall is, is very high. So in terms of keeping energy efficient within the home, um, it's, it's up there. Also, the other thing about the, the walls, you have a property like this, it's a luxury property. You're probably going to have some luxury pieces of art. You're probably gonna have some art pieces that mean something to you that are maybe heavier in weight that cost some money. These walls, you can actually, you can actually hang the, the art off of without the nail ripping through the drywall. So those are the two main reasons for that drywall being used. Insulation and being able to hang um, heavier artwork. So that's that's about it. That's all I have off the top of my head here. Man, look at this indoor outdoor. So awesome. Again, seven bedrooms, six full baths, two half baths, nearly 12,000 square feet of interior space. The home is priced just north of $5.1 million. Right now, it's sitting in McLean, Virginia. That's it. See you on the next one.